Bum, bum. Are you enjoying Theatre Phonics plays? Do you want more content? Well, on the Theatre Phonic Patreon, we have ad free episodes, blooper reels, and QA sessions, as well as the opportunity to watch the live recordings and name a character in a play. Visit patreon.com forward slash theatre phonic for more information. That's patreon.com forward slash theatre phonic to get more of what you love. Bum, bum. Theatre phonic presents On a Tondon Doggo. Written and directed by Emmeline Brayfield. Stop. Just stop. What? Seriously. What? You think I can't see the cards you're hiding in your pocket? Oh. You're the worst card shark I have ever met. <laughs> like you've ever met a card shark before. I'm part of a gin rummy club. Oh. Oh. Has Norma become a dab hand at the Hindu shuffle since she retired? She's not that bad, actually. Oh. What about bridge? Too complicated. You'll get distracted. True. Go fish. <sighs> we are not that bored. I'm not bored. Or, um, should I just play solitaire by myself? Racing demon? We don't have space for that in here. We'll lose the cards down the side and then what will we play? We could go sit outside. <sighs> Don't be an idiot. <laughs> oh, but I've been trapped in here since six and I'm suffocating on your farts. I told you you shouldn't have brought me that vegan wrap for dinner then. Fine, you do the food next time. <sighs> I've happily gone to Smiley Burgers and paid for both of us. I'm banned from the takeaways, even drive throughs Every single one? Yep. Seriously? Not that I'd want to eat at them anyway. They're the worst of humanity's creations. You think that fast food is the worst thing that humanity has ever created? Yeah. The worst thing? Like, worse than the gun? Uh-huh. Worse than the atomic bomb? Uh-huh. Chemical warfare? Uh-huh. Mm. Bunchy smugglers. Fast food restaurants represent everything that is wrong with a capitalist state. Oh, why does everything have to come back to capitalism with you? Because the devil created capitalism to destroy humanity. No, you don't get to use that. You're an atheist. I was being metaphorical. Well, you were being... hyperbolical. Someone's been reading the dictionary again. Yeah, it was the word of the day. And I'm pretty amazed with myself that I managed to use it. Oh! We could play I Spy. There's nothing to spy, nitwit. Oh, of course there is. Please. <sighs> Go on, then. Yay. <sighs> I Spy. With my little eyes, something beginning with C. Cards. How did you get it so quickly? Because it's pretty much the only thing in here besides us. And you don't know my name to spy me. Those are excellent points. Well, surely it's been long enough for us to exchange names? Never exchange names. Your self-imposed rules are ridiculous. Nothing will change if we know each other's names. 
How do you refer to me when talking with your friends? I don't have friends. Oh, that's really sad. Even if I did, I wouldn't mention you. I have friends. And I came up with the name for you. Because I, I don't like you being nameless. Mm -mm. Do you want to know what I've called you? Not really. Are you sure you don't want to know? It's a cool name, I promise. Promise. Double promise. Cross my heart. Hope to die. Stick a needle in my eye. You're not going to let it drop until you tell me, are you? Rosencrantz. Really? Mm-hmm. I think of myself more as a Guildenstern. We're an iconic duo bound by fate to bring down the royalty. Have you ever seen Hamlet? No. Have you read it? Um, you know that Rosencrantz and Guildenstern aren't exactly the heroes of the piece. Well, <laughs> we're not exactly heroes either. We're more <gasps> like Dark Jedis. They both get executed. The Dark Jedi. Oh, Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. Yeah. Oh, uh, oh, oh. oh. No, Shah. What? Could we be Bonnie and Clyde then? Firstly, they were lovers. Secondly, they both got shot by the police. Oh, uh, not Bonnie and Clyde then. It's odd. The Bonnie and Clyde got shot, I know. No, that wasn't odd at all. That was inevitable. Oh. Well, what's odd, then? That we have to be here this late. It's never normally this late. Timings change. I figured that there'd been a disruption in the schedule or something. Do you say schedule or schedule? I say schedule. 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 Maybe, maybe. Mm -hmm. You don't think something's wrong? Is it a setup? Are we being set up? No, we'd be able to tell that. Does make it quieter. I like the quiet. I don't. Why not? Too much time to think. Why do there have to be two? Two what? Two of us, you know, waiting here. It, it seems like a waste of resources. It's the rule of two. <laughs> the rule of two? The rule of two? Oh, like with the Sith! What? Star Wars? The rule of two? It states that there should only ever be two Sith. At one time, the master and the apprentice. Once the apprentice becomes stronger than the master, it's inevitable that the apprentice will kill the master and then take on an apprentice of their own who will kill them and then take on an apprentice of their own who will kill them. Okay, I get it. I get it. Yeah. I mean, there's actually a lot more to the law if you want me to go into the No, I'm, I'm I... really fine. Okay. <laughs> Though the question would be, in this whole master-apprentice enigma we find ourselves in, which one of us would be the master and which one would be the apprentice? You actually have to ask that. Yes. Which one of us, young Skywalker? Though if I were the master, do I think I'd choose you as an apprentice? Why not? You're not good enough at card games. Oh. <laughs> okay, that's fair. Don't take it personally. You always take it personally. <laughs> Fine, I'd have you as an apprentice. <laughs> Thank you. I would have you as my master. 
So what did you mean by the rule of two then? Greatness comes in pairing. The contradictions and consistencies that help each person become a better version of themselves. Uh, uh, uh. It also makes it less likely that we'll miss something. We keep each other more focused. Two sets of eyes are better than one. So you're not really a fan of polyamory then? What? Where did you get that from? Greatness comes in pairs. It seems that you were suggesting that two is the best number, which would mean that adding an additional person, or persons, naughty, would be a bad thing. You have taken a dive bomb off the bridge of logic there. <gasps> have I? Oh. Pairings don't have to be amorous. It's just the popular culture seems to prefer the charm of romantic couples. In a non-relationship setting, I find that two is the best number. You get a different viewpoint without too many cooks. You have someone looking out for you without the concern that they're going to be looking out more for another person. And there's a larger share of the reward too. And romantically? I've never had a polyamorous relationship, so I don't think I could say. It's like conspiracy theory equations. T totally. You don't know what they are, do you? Uh, no. So, this physicist, Dr Grimes, did a study into conspiracy theories and how long they would actually stay secret depending on the amount of people required to make the conspiracy theory happen. With me so far? Yeah. Good. The more people there are, the less likely that something will remain confidential. For example, the moon landings. In order to fake them, around 400,000 people would have to be involved. He worked out that the fraud would have been uncovered within four years, whether due to a whistleblower or some stupid mistake. The result in hypothesis is that the fewer people involved in a collusion, the more likely that it will remain under wraps. Having one person here, therefore, doing this shift would be ideal. But the risks of missing something, falling asleep, the, the lapses in concentration are greater. Having two people reduces these risks without increasing the chances of exposure too much. Oh, clever. Snap! Snap. Would you want to play Snap? No. What, do you believe in any conspiracy theories, then? Nah. Well, not even the ones that have been proven correct, like MKUltra? Well, of course, they've been proven to be true. But that means that any conspiracy theory could be real, they just haven't been proven yet. How do I put this? True theories work in contrast to conspiracy theories. True theories are much easier to be disproven than made fact. Example, gravity. That's technically a theory, not a fact. Gravity's probably been in existence since the beginning of time, but all it would take is for a single apple to not fall to the ground when dropped for the theory to be disproven. Conspiracy theories, however, disregard all evidence to the contrary. The theory that the Earth is flat has been disproven hundreds if not thousands of ways, but yet the theory remains and far too many people still believe it to be true. So, technically, conspiracy theories should be called Anti-theories. You could look at it like that, I suppose. So helium balloons prove the law of gravity incorrect, then? Ha! I'm not going to dignify that with a response. I bet I'm right. Mm -hmm. I bet that right now, someone out there is trying to convince their mate that they're being spied on 
and is being dismissed as a conspiracist when, in actual fact, they are 100% correct. Yeah. We're all being spied on in one way or another. You think we're being spied on right now? Of course. What makes you think that? The camera in the corner. Oh. Oh. Is it always watching? Yeah. No! Oh! I should have used that for my I spy word! Camera, see, see! And you're seeing it because it's a camera and it's seeing you. See. So, Rosencrantz, which is your favourite pairing then? Gin and tonic. But that's not, no, I, that's not what I meant. I, but it is the best pairing. I'm more of a cider person, really. But, which is your favourite duo then? Uh, Joe and Meg March from Little Women. Not where I expected you to go. Look, they accept, love and support each other despite their differing views on life. They help each other to become better people. Oh, that's nice. That's nice for them. Mm. I should watch that film. Read the books, they're better. <gasps> There's a book? There's two. Wow! You know, you learn something new every day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Every day you learn something new, whether it's about duo pairings and which ones each of us think about. Go on then. What's your favourite pairing? Scooby-Doo and Shaggy. Of course it is. Well, they don't judge each other for being scared because they're both scared. They always help each other out through a situation and they always catch the bad guy. Plus, they clearly spend most of their time high, which must be really fun. No doubt. It'd be a fun way to spend these times. Man. No one would notice if we were off our faces right now. Right now. Mm. Dude. They would if we missed something. <sighs> Come on. You've never been tempted. Just have a little, little toxy, little, little tokadon right here, right here on one of these ships. A little hip flask for your gin and tonic. Not anymore. Anymore? What, what happened? I got drunk once. Missed something important. Lost my job. Oh, babes. We all make mistakes, but I seem to have the bad luck that when I mess up, it turns out to be a disaster. So I'm incredibly careful now. That's a good way to be. Not really. It's slow and dull. But it does prevent me from losing more jobs. How long have we been here now? A few hours, probably. No, no, I, I meant overall. How many months have we been doing this? Five. Feels like so much longer. Always does. And we've never seen a single thing. Not one. Not one little thing. Or even a little, like, little just glimpse. Do you think others have, you know, seen anything? See? I doubt it. I hope not. Hope not? 
Firstly, as long as nothing happens, we keep having to watch and therefore keep getting paid. Secondly, I do not want to have to deal with the repercussions and paperwork of something happening. Surely it wouldn't be that bad. Have you ever had a call out? No, no, never. Don't even know what that is, to be honest. Pray that you never find out. Hmm. What do you think is out there? No idea. Go on, have a guess. Uh, oh, I don't know. You go first and I'll have a think. I used to think that it was monsters or aliens mm -hmm. or zombies or something. Okay. One of the four. But now I think it's the truth. The truth? Yeah, the truth. The truth to what's happening. And we're in charge of making sure that the truth doesn't get out. Or in. Depending on which way you look at it. Huh. So. Your turn. Floating apples. <laughs> This is funny. Crap. It's nuts. I, it's very nice. Honestly, I, I don't think there's anything out there. We're here probably just to give the illusion of security and safety, even though it's most likely not needed, because there's nothing to be concerned about. That is most definitely a conspiracy theory. Which is why they only have two of us here at a time, to prevent the conspiracy theory from getting out! <gasps> oh, thank goodness for that. Oh, um, are we on the same time tomorrow? No, back to the usual time. Cuckoo, cuckoo, cuckoo. See you then, then. Yeah. Bye. Bye, Rose and Grant. Bye, Kilton's turn. Ooh. You've been listening to On a Tondon Doggo, written and directed by Emmeline Brayfield, with Emmeline Brayfield as A and Ellis J. Wells as B. Produced by Cat on a Piano Productions. For a full list of the music in this production, please see the show notes. The Theatophonic theme tune was composed by Jackson Pentland, performed by Jackson Pentland, Molly Fife Taylor, and Emmeline Brayfield. For more information about the Theatophonic podcast, go to catonapiano.uk forward slash theatophonic, tweet or Instagram us at theatophonic, or visit our Facebook page. If you enjoy Theatophonic and would like to get more content, please consider becoming a patron by going to patreon.com forward slash theatophonic. Please don't forget to rate and review. Thank you for listening.